Hello, language learners. You will never guess what I found. Okay, so some context. I was talking to a language learner who was considering taking the ad one, well, the Fluent in Three Months Challenge it is now, the Fluent in Three Months Challenge, and she was asking me what I thought about it. And so I had taken the challenge back when it was called the ad one challenge in 2018, 2018. I had remembered my experience after the fact, basically, that I was able to study Spanish consistently for 90 days and then it just kind of fell off. Um, but what I had forgotten was that I had taken this challenge twice in a row. So one 90 day segment and then directly after that another 90 day segment. And what I found on an old YouTube channel, I found a private video of my submission to the Add One Challenge in 2018 and I rewatched it again. And my perspective, my ideas on what was helpful for learning a language and what you should do for learning a language. <sighs> Three years later, I know so much better. I know so much better. So I wanted to show you this old video and I wanted to show you what I've learned and hopefully help you stop making the same mistakes that I was making that I was so confident about in 2018. So remember, I said that, you know, I had taken the challenge once and then the video that I'm about to show you was my submission for the second time around. And so I talk a little bit about my experience with the first time around um, and to explain why I was gonna go at it again. Um, spoiler alert, the second, the second 90 days that I was in that challenge, I just gave up. I stopped and it didn't work. And there's just so much to share about this perspective that, um, Man, I just know a lot better, so let's just get right into it. Hello, my name is Jamie. This is my application for the Add One Challenge, where I will be learning Spanish for 30 minutes a day, every day. And I have these questions. Um, what questions? Okay, past experience. I spent a year in Spain learning Spanish, and that helped a lot with my fluency for sure. I was at like an intermediate level. Outside of Spain, I have... I'm gonna stop here for just a second. You can tell just from my face and my voice that like, I did not have the energy, I did not have the excitement, I didn't like have the passion that I have now, and I was just kind of being dragged <laughs> through my language learning with this challenge. And you know, as it continues on with this video, you'll, you'll see like my thoughts on it but like it feels so, you know, low key and like frustrated and unmotivated. And the way that I'm talking about language learning right now is a completely different story from how I normally talk about language learning. I've really struggled really hard with staying consistent with this. Um, and that was what I got out of this past Add One Challenge was I have, I have been learning Spanish every day for half an hour for 30 days, 90 days which is crazy. So that is the whole point of the, now it's called the Fluent in Three Months Challenge, that, you know, you study, um, like, very consistently. You have yourself a plan, a study plan for the next 90 days where you have to study, like, at the very least, it's like half an hour, like two days a week or something like that. And the whole purpose of it is to keep you accountable and keep you excited and motivated to study every day, every other day, whatever it is. And like in, in the program, they're like, okay, you can plan for some break days to take and whatever. But the point is that you are studying when you say that you are going to study. And that was a big deal for me at this point because it really did help me keep me accountable in the short term. Remember that after this video, um, I failed the next challenge. Um, I just could not keep it up for another 90 days which is kind of telling in itself. Um, but you can see that I was re <laughs> really excited about studying every single day for 30 days. That was just like absolutely crazy to me. And I'm really excited about that because one of the problems that I had, one of the struggles that I have without this challenge is that every single time I get sick or I get busy or something, I just fall off the boat. Like a week ago I had the flu. I was completely bedridden for two and a half days and because of this challenge, I was able to, I was able to put on a show for half an hour and just kind of passively learn Spanish. And 
that's what I was looking for in my so, something to keep me motivated and accountable and what I want to get out of this. It's a lot to unpack there. Um, first of all, I, I'm, it's killing me how like unmotivated and stressful my whole energy is here. Um, and just, I was so sick of giving up every single time. Another thing is that, you know, when I said that, you know, every time that I get stressed or sick or whatever, I keep falling off the boat. Um, it's really interesting because that's, you know, something that I help my clients out a lot with. You can tell that I was experiencing the same thing that, you know, every single time something came up, I was just completely knocked off the boat. Fortunately, I don't do that anymore. Unfortunately, it's not from the Add One Challenge or the Fluent in Three Months Challenge, sorry. It helped a lot in the short term, not in the long term. And the third thing, the third thing that I wanted to say up, to, up till here is I remember that time when I got the flu and I was bedridden for like two and a half days, I had said. So what I did for those days was I put um, a Netflix show on the, on the TV. It was like Spirit, the cartoon for Spirit or something that was available in Spanish. And looking back, I wasn't doing that because I enjoyed it because I wanted to, I was putting it on because I was obligated to, that I felt like I needed to, because I was trying to like put in the spreadsheet that, you know, you got in the challenge that I had studied that day. And it was basically avoiding negative reinforcements, um, which if you don't know, that doesn't work. Um, I didn't actually enjoy that show because it was like a kid's show. It wasn't particularly interesting to me. What I enjoyed was that I could tell that I was getting better at the past tense and things like that. But the actual content was really boring. And I never actually finished that show because I didn't really want to. You can tell back in 2018, I didn't realize that like that's important that you're enjoying what you're doing. I was like, yes, I'm studying every single day. I'm being held accountable. This is what I need. Um, but it wasn't what I needed because my second go around with this, I just, I fell off the boat, probably fell off the boat for another year. I probably stopped studying Spanish for a year, um, which is very telling. Um, version of the add one challenge is that, um, my mastermind group, it pretty much fell apart pretty early on. Um, none of us seemed to really put in the effort, myself included. But this time, I want to put some effort into that and create friendships with people and see, you know, what happens when I put something into the mastermind group, see what I get out of it, see if I get some more helpful tips for my strategy, see if I can, you know, help be a little bit more motivated, stuff like that. Just see what happens when I actually have a group of friends, not just this, you know, reminder which has helped a lot for sure definitely um but i i mean that didn't work i i don't remember anybody who was in my group because what they do is they section you off into different groups of like a few people who are all studying the same language and first of all i mean it's really hard in general to stay consistent with a bunch of friends friends people who you have mutual interest with that you know you never see face to face I mean physically you always see online but also the important thing to be aware of with this is that um this was a 90 day challenge which is short term and everybody was going into it with short term goals which isn't really forgiving for long term friendships like you're probably I mean you might but it's more likely that if you go into a 90 day challenge, um, you're probably not gonna end up with a lot of long lasting relationships past those 90 days. Um, yeah, don't work. Not in the slightest. Nope, don't work. I wanna see how the mastermind helps. And um, the biggest struggle that I have with language learning, um, I'm not sure how to fix this one, is impatience. Um, I want to take the C2 Dell exam in November and I'm terrified that I'm not learning fast enough just constantly all the time so I really have to work on having the patience to push myself to that level ooh that's a lot to unpack too okay so that is still my goal I have not hit it three years later um, but that right there there's a couple of things to say 
first of all, impatience, we all have it. I mean, I still have like a small degree of it, but it doesn't control my language learning or anything. I just want to learn languages all the time. And it's not physically possible. Um, the second thing was that I had said that I want to take that exam in November. I believe this video was in April, which is May, June, July, August, September, October, November, seven months, um, which is a long time, but uh, not very long, especially considering I wasn't really fully immersing myself. Basically, you were not gonna go from like B1, I think it was at this phase, to C2 in 11 months with 30 minutes a day. It's just, it's not going to happen, which is okay. Um, but I had these, I had such unrealistic goals and I had these goals based on what sounded exciting and what sounded motivating and not what was actually reasonable. So every time November passed, it's like that exam is available like twice a year. Every time that date passed, I would, I feel, I would feel crappy about myself because I wasn't able to do the thing like I had expected to be able to just because it was exciting, not based on anything realistic about what it takes to learn a language, what I knew, what time I had available, any realistic factors. So I did mention in there that um, I felt guilty for not studying all the time. I felt guilty because I thought that I wasn't studying enough, that, it, that I felt guilty that there were other things that I was doing that wasn't studying which again is now something that I help my clients out with a lot that like, you know, helping them shift that mindset so you're not constantly criticizing yourself for having a life outside of language learning and having other responsibilities and having other things that you enjoy doing. You know, instead of being in this negative cycle where you feel so guilty and so bad about yourself and you just you have this constant like shadow over your language learning where you're just like, oh, well, I'm not doing enough or I am not enough, or I'm not learning fast enough, I'm not spending enough time. That is really unhelpful and I don't know, this video is making me feel really sad just seeing like, you know, how mean I was to myself and how critical I was of myself and also just like how tired I was talking about it and how I looked hopeless. I looked really, really hopeless. And it's the same kind of hopeless that I see in a lot of my clients before we work together too which is probably one of the reasons why I love working with them so much, seeing the transformation from this version of me to this version of me, where all of a sudden I am obsessed with language learning and I love it and I love sharing it. You know, 2018 Jamie was so just like beat down and tired and frustrated and stressed out. And it just, it makes me sad, you know? And see if, and trust that if I push myself at a normal amount that I will get there when it's time for me to get there. It's just having patience and trusting and that's really hard for me and I definitely want to conquer that. Yeah, that trust is hard. Um, the mistake that I was making here was that I was setting myself unrealistic goals and expectations and trusting that somehow it would figure itself out. And obviously it didn't. I mean, I figured myself out and I figured out how to shift my expectations of myself and my expectations of learning a language. But you can see that I had such high hopes and I wanted to do it so badly and I was willing to hope and trust again, but I kept getting like beat down over and over and over again. And I finally had to learn for myself that like the reason that I was failing my expectations wasn't because there was something wrong with me. I just didn't know any better and I had to learn how to make it better and eventually I did fortunately but man uh, it's, it's, just, it's, it's, it's so sad to see myself like this and um, that's what I want to get out of this add one challenge ah looking back at that and realizing that like I bombed that one I did really really well the first time I did it um, and then the time the, the challenge that I was submitting for in that video, I did not, no, I couldn't keep that up for 180 days. 90 plus 90 is 180, right? 90 days was great. I could not keep that up for 180 days. I started out and I think the first week I just, I was gone, I couldn't do it. Because that kind of accountability, that kind of system, that kind of 
that kind of expectation is not realistic for the long term. Short term, sure. Short term, that's fine. But long term, as you can see from that old video, is just... It didn't work unfortunately. That is all I have for this video. In the comment section below, let me know, have you ever tried a challenge like this where it's like intensive study for a short period of time? Um, if you have, let me know how it went. I would really love to hear your experience. Otherwise, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video every Wednesday and Sunday. Have a wonderful day and I will see you next time.